Hey, Beacon, welcome home to your Bounce Back Blueprint Community Podcast, where you are challenged to be, do, and have God's best as you thrive on your journey from setback to success. I'm your Bounce Back Guide, Tiffany Huff Struthers, and I'll be guiding you on the journey by sharing tips, tools, and the tea on how I was able to bounce back from escaping death, healing from heartbreak, and finding hope in homelessness. And then I wrote an award-winning book all about it. And shout out to God. Ever since I was courageous enough to share my story, my life and the lives of women around the world have been forever changed. And as a member of the Bounce Back Blueprint community, I'm called to teach you to do the same. So grab your journal and let's build this blueprint. Hey, Beacon, hey, before we get into building the blueprint this week with our fabulous guest, I want to make sure that you are aware that I am available to support you on this bounce back journey. Listen, I know what it's like to wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and wonder who in the world is the woman looking back at you. I know what it feels like when life knocks you down and you have no idea where to even begin to pick up the pieces and rebuild and start again with clarity and with the courage to get past the shame and the hurts and the failures. So If you are feeling this, if you are in this space, I would love to support you, love to work with you, and it's very easy to get started. All you need to do is grab the link in the show notes and schedule your breakthrough session. It is at bit.ly slash your bounce back guide. No obligation, of course. This is an opportunity for us to chat and see if we are a good fit to work together and make 2021 the year that you begin to get things done so that you can live and be and do and have all that God has called you to. I look forward to talking to you. Now, let's get into building this blueprint. Welcome back, ladies, for another episode of our The Lies You Tell Yourself series. I am so excited because today we have an amazing guest. She is Evelyn Lavaster of Evelyn Lavaster Fitness, and we are talking all about the lie that you will never lose. I will never lose weight. I will never have a body that I feel good in or about. Let me tell you about my sis, Evelyn, before she comes on to the mic. Evelyn is the owner of Evelyn Lavasser Fitness, a company that focuses on helping busy, overwhelmed moms reach their body goals without dieting or deprivation. Evelyn knows that moms can be especially hard on themselves and expect perfection in our homes, jobs, marriages, and of course, with our bodies. She wants every woman to know she can want to change her body and love it at the same time. Most importantly, Evelyn knows that moms want that well, excuse me, want what is best for their children and having negative feelings about ourselves can lead our children to have negative feelings about themselves too. So Evelyn is sure to approach all things from the angle of knowing that our actions shape our children and the legacies of health we will leave them. Evelyn is a certified group and personal trainer, a hormonal fat loss coach, and has a specialization in behavioral change. She also has a BA in psychology and a master's in education. Woo! Welcome, 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 Evelyn, to the show. I'm so glad to have you here. I'm so glad to be here. I'm Thank you for inviting me. Yes, yes. There's so much goodness that I want to unpack just from your bio. But before we dig into this conversation, please tell the community who you are. Who is Evelyn beyond the bio? So Evelyn Lavaster, like you said, I have a gajillion certifications, um, a lot of experience in the area. Before I became um, totally aligned with my health journey, I was a middle school teacher. I taught middle school English for 11 years. Um, But I feel that my story started really young. I was super fit and athletic growing up. Um, I went to college and was a lot less active, uh, a lot more interested in, you know, partying and hanging out and (laughs) drinking beer and eating pizza. So I found that freshman 15. And because I had been so um, defined by my appearance for so long, 
when I started to gain weight, I started to lose myself. I started to lose who I thought I was. And that's when I found dieting and dieting really made me feel like I was in control because I could just manipulate my food a little bit and my body would change, um, you know, until the diet stopped working. So I literally cycled on diets for such a long time until, um, actually after I got married and that's where things started to change dramatically for me. My husband wanted to have kids immediately and I was not ready. It took me a couple of years to get on the same page. Um, and I always thought, you know, because I decided I was ready, then things would just work out. But um, I had two losses, uh, which left me just very disconnected with myself, very unsure of everything that I was as a human being. And when I finally tried a third time, um, the nine months felt not like it's, it's horrible to say this, but it didn't really feel joyous. It felt terrifying because the thought of losing a third baby would break me from the inside. So a part of me like didn't let myself feel that hope. And all along, I was waiting for somebody to tell me again, that horrible sentence that I heard twice before the baby's gone. Um, oh, that that, that uh, right there is so much to unpack. So let's pull it back just yeah. a little bit, back to that college space mm -hmm. you found yourself mm -hmm. on the cycle of like dieting and mm -hmm. maybe deprivation. How did you get into the cycle? Right. Like, was it the norm for you growing up that, you know, someone around you was always on a diet or was it the culture of the college community that you were a part of? How did you get to the point where you were like, hey, I'm going to lose this freshman 15. I'm going on this diet, this diet, this diet. Well, you know, I feel like it was more that growing up because I was so athletic, um, I would say 90% of the attention I received from other people for, you know, first in sports, my friends. And as I got a little bit older, men was all focused on how I looked so much that it literally became in my mind, it was equivalent. Evelyn has a great body. Therefore, if Evelyn doesn't have a great body, then who the hell is she? Wow. Um, and it was so much. So when I started gaining weight, I felt like, who am I? I need to get this fixed quickly so that I can get back to feel myself. So what I hear you saying is that you really associated a lot of your value with your physical image, your body. 100%. And I know that there is someone who is listening right now who has that very same mm -hmm. story. And I appreciate you being 100% transparent mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. So you get to college, you're a freshman and... <laughs> like so many of us, the freshman mm -hmm. 15 or 20, maybe even 30 or 40 mm -hmm. pals on, right? What happened or at what point did you realize I need to do something? Was it that you stopped getting the compliments and attention or was it that you did it feel good yourself? What triggered the cycle? I think when I started seeing that there were so many girls around me that were athletic and fit, and I started to compare myself. You know, I used to look like that. I used to feel like that. Um, so because I was so enthralled in being defined by what I looked like um, and seeing people around me maintaining that, I, I felt like I felt less than because my body was changing and I couldn't do anything about it. So, um, you know, there, there's also a little part of it that there's an, a, an issue of control, I feel like, um, that losing yourself, that comparing yourself, you kind of feel a little out of control and you start grasping at straws like I need to get a hold of myself. And, and I think I found that control in dieting. I see. Okay. So was there a particular introduction or into dieting or was there a fad diet at the time that you thought this is it? 
this is my silver bullet. I'll just do this and it'll be fine. I remember um, seeing at the time uh, Weight Watchers was getting super popular. All you got to do is count your points and you're going to lose this weight and you're going to feel great. So I counted those points like crazy. And of course, because I was 19 years old, that weight came off pretty quickly. I mean, you, you know, your body hasn't really gone through all the hormonal changes that it does. So um, again, and that kind of just reinforced that control feeling because it was like, oh, I could just count my points up, eat whatever I want based on these points. And, and I'm looking at me thinning out and thinning out and thinning out. Um, and then, you know, when you stop counting points, you put the weight back on and you try another diet because you never really handled what the problem was to begin with. Right. So the problem becomes the diet, mm -hmm. not that you have control issues mm -hmm. or that there is this poor self image or mm -hmm. any other myriad of things that we as women mm -hmm. deal with. Right. Mm -hmm. so you said this went on for years. Now you're, you're a professional woman mm -hmm. and I'm going air quotes, right? You get out of college, you get married mm -hmm. and still there's this struggle with weight. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. during those years, did you continue the cycle of dieting? Yes. 100%. And I would, I would exercise like crazy and I would be really controlling over my food. Um, never acknowledging that that behavior pushed me further and further away from being able to trust myself. And what I know now is that trust cannot exist with control. If I want to learn to trust again. my, oof. Say that again. Abby. Yes. <laughs> It's the truth. Trust cannot exist with control. You you can trust your body. You can trust the people in your life. You can trust that your will is what it is, but you can't control it. So you can have trust or you can have control, but you can't have them both at the same time. And so at what point did you come to that realization or what was it that happened in your life that caused you to rethink <clears throat> excuse me, this cycle that you were on and the mindset that you had about mm -hmm. your body and the control that you mm -hmm. needed to have or in order to be your version of healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I feel like this kind of came in waves for me. It was like layers. So the very first layer was when I finally had that successful pregnancy and the doctor put my baby next to my face. Now, when I tell you prior to that, I remember not praying, more like begging God to let me be a mother. Like if I could be a mother, I will be the best mother and not just do everything for my child, but teach her all the ways to be the best way that she could be. And when she was born and the doctor put her next to my face and I said, oh my God, she's real. This is happening. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be the best mother that I could be. And that's when it hit me. How can I be the best mother that I could be if I'm not the best me that I can be? How can I love her so fully if I'm not willing to love myself the same way? And that's where my healing started was seeing my impact on my daughter. So, but that was, ap you had your daughter after having had two miscarriages, right? Correct. Correct. So, so I think it's very pivotal just to backtrack a moment and mm -hmm. talk about how, you know, the loss, which I've never experienced, but I can only imagine was devastating to mm -hmm. say the least. Mm -hmm. That on top of the challenges that you were having with your weight, mm -hmm. how did you muster the courage, mm. even prayed that prayer to ask for another um, opportunity to become a mom. Because I know there's someone listening who's who's thinking about a loss that she suffered mm. or is trying to lose weight and is bargaining with God between mm. losing weight or having a baby because of the potential weight that might be gained. Mm -hmm. I think that the journey the journey had to begin with me relinquishing a little bit of that control. I had to let go of my pain and trust that God had intention for me. I had to, that's the other part. When you're trying to be in control, you're trying to ignore your pain. So I had to learn how to feel it 
I had to learn how to share it with my husband because it's so difficult when you're in that space. Oh, the, the, the myriad of feelings that you have coming at you in all directions, like you don't trust your body. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? There was a baby there and now there's not, you know, it, it, it creates such a disconnect. Um, so I hear you saying very clearly that this process, um, from for you to get healthy and also for you to become a mom required you to surrender so and much trust God, not only trust yourself, but trust God that he could, you know, do exceedingly abundantly more like mm -hmm. his word says, even with the losses, even with having had years of yo-yo dieting. And isn't it amazing that he gave you the double portion blessing at once, mm -hmm. your child and a newfound fire mm -hmm. to get healthy. Yes. Yes. So what did that transformation look like once you, you know, I mean, I could just see you like a movie where the doctor lays the baby down. Yes. Like, this is it. Like, I'm going to live for my baby. So this mm -hmm. should live. Mm -hmm. So what did that look like after that? So it, it was exactly what you're saying. If you, I can picture that day, like it was yesterday, I'm laying on that C-section table. My arms are spread out because you know you're kind of strapped to the table and he all along I didn't believe that that baby was there I knew that my body changed I felt her move but a part of me had such a wall up because I was terrified that they were going to tell me this isn't happening and when they put her next to me it was like the world stopped and I'm breathing for the first time like this is real thank you, God, I am not going to let you down and I'm not going to let her down. Um, but I have to be honest, although I raised her 100% with intention and I raised her to focus on her character, you are so smart. You are such a problem solver. I love that you can tell me when you're upset. Um, you know, I love how kind you are. I, from when she was a, a little, little girl. And then three years later, I was blessed with my second baby. So I have two girls now. Um, and I always raise them with intention. But just th two years ago, I was at a picnic with both my daughters and my husband. And they had just come out of a pool. And I served them their lunch. And a woman says to my daughter, honey, I want to die just telling the story. Honey, if you want to keep that figure, you better back up off those burgers. No. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yes. So it hit me, first of all, like when I stopped raging inside, because I, I spent so much time and energy to not make her see herself as being valued by her exterior. And yeah. somebody else just came and like crushed that. Right. And that's when I realized then that as mothers, we don't see how our words affect our children. We don't see that as women as a whole, even though we want to be valued as more, we still reduce everybody to the size of their pants, you know? Um, and that's when I realized that I had been living intentionally. I had been focused on growing their character intentionally, but I wasn't fully in acceptance of mine still there was a part of me that had still even though i had a higher purpose that was totally outside of me a part of me still did not feel that connection with my worth and my value i had just transferred that control from myself to now putting all of my energy into being the the best mom um and that's where my story is a little bit more difficult because um, a little backstory when I was in high school my grandfather was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and it was very difficult to watch you know he was a general in the army reduced to someone who would sit on the couch and he he didn't recognize us anymore and I remember walking in on my mom praying and saying my god please don't ever let me forget my children and that's stuck with me forever. 
So a few years ago, um, we started to have concerns about my mom and things that she would say and repeat. And um, my whole family got together and, and we decided that uh, we would have her get an MRI. And she was diagnosed with dementia. And I was driving when the doctor called me. And I remember pulling over into the mall parking lot. It's freezing. You know, it's one of those cold days. You don't really get those in Atlanta like that. But, um, it was one of those cold, cold days where the sky just, it was gray and dark. That's what I can picture. For some reason, the mall parking lot was pretty empty. And I remember thinking like, I'm going to watch my mom's greatest fears become her reality. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, the words came out of my mouth and I didn't even realize it. Like, my God, please do not ever let me forget my children. And that moment is when everything changed for me about my mindset, about my value, about my feelings about myself, because I realized that I had begged God for this life. I had everything that I prayed for right in front of me, but I was never living in gratitude of the gift that I am. I put myself last and I realized that my mom's suffering was the catalyst to my own healing. Ooh, wow. I wasn't expecting you to make me cry. Oh, I'm sorry. But it's such, no, it's, it's so, so difficult. It's so powerful how God uses people and our experiences to blow our minds and change our lives. Mm -hmm. so let's talk about that shift that happens specifically with the mindset. Mm -hmm. Because I know that is huge when we are when we're going to do anything, when we're going to make any change, it starts in our mind. So mm -hmm. what did you do or what happened in your mind after that cold day when you got that news? Mm -hmm. I, I think I started to look at myself a little bit differently. I started to be able to say, and I could hear, I, I was having this long, drawn out conversation with God in the car. And after I pulled myself together, I felt him say, like, I have given you everything that you need starting with you and you've been ignoring it and i was can I tell you can i just tell you evelyn that all of the decisions that i'm making right now in this year are the result of god telling me last summer you have everything you've prayed for the only reason it doesn't look or feel the way you think it should is because you're not stewarding it well so I guess he's using you to tell me that again. <laughs> Just a little reminder. <laughs> Just a little reminder. And I know it's not only for me. I hope somebody caught that. Mm -hmm. You have to be a good steward of what you pray for. You have to prepare for what you pray for. So when mm -hmm. you got that message, what did you do with it? I, first of all, I sat my husband down and I'm like, how, how have I been living so blindly all this time? I keep asking for more and wanting more and pouring into everybody else without ever having known that like, I was here for a reason. I am asking for gifts, but I am one. And how dare I disrespect the gift that I am by living life, not acknowledging it. And, and I feel like that's when I was able to, for the first time in my life, start to relinquish control and start focusing on trusting my gut. And that came slowly, but intentionally to constantly be mindful, to constantly be present, to wake up every single morning and tell myself what I'm grateful for rather than what else I need to strive for. Yes. Or what you didn't do yesterday. Yes. Yes. And so that gratitude, I'm sure, caused a dramatic shift right the way you like you said from the moment you woke up things were different yes and I am a firm believer that the best way to express our gratitude is to be able is to be a good steward over what God has given us mm -hmm. and our bodies are not an exception to that absolutely absolutely you know it's funny I read actually a quote this morning that kind of blew my mind it said um I don't want to butcher it but it was somewhere along the lines of we say that 
life is so short, we should embrace it. But then we say in the same token, change is hard, take your time. So what is it? You have all this time or you got to move fast. Which one is it? I feel like the, the, the part of change that is hard and takes so much time is the fact that we don't have clarity around it. And once we gain the clarity to our why, suddenly it just happens. It happens and you're aligned and you're comfortable and you're confident and you wake up happy to just be you. And ready to do the work. Ready. Yes, that, ready. Is, that is so good um, because I'm a strong proponent of clarity. I don't think people understand the currency of clarity and mm-hmm. not only financial currency, but the currency that is the uh, wealth of your health, mm-hmm. the wealth of your knowledge, the wealth of your vision, right? It's it's got infinite value. Mm -hmm. So with this newfound clarity and this newfound gratitude and this new mindset, how did you begin to tackle getting healthy without going back into the cycle of dieting? So I started with telling myself that if I know I have all the answers, I need to start asking better questions to myself. Um, And that was I mean, and it was the hardest thing was turning off all the misinformation that I had been fed for all these years about food and nutrition and um, really, wait, 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 say that yep. again. What did you have to do? Get rid of all the misinformation, all the, listen, the, you have to cut out carbs in order to be healthy. You have to be willing to give up everything around you in order to have the body that you want. You have to work out X amount of days. It's all or nothing. Um, you're, if you think you're worth it, you're, you'll give it all up. Um, and those are their lies. Those are lies. Those are lies. Those are lies. I will tell you, I am, I turned 42 last year and I am the healthiest, the leanest, and the most comfortable in my skin than I have been in my entire life. And I do it all without questioning my food, feeling guilt or shame around it without one ounce of dieting. It's 100% being mindful, being focused on how my body feels, being grateful and focused on my life rather than chasing a body that I want. You know, that's so good, Evelyn, to be able to get to the point where you stop chasing. And I think that for a lot of us, uh, myself included at certain points of my life, if I'm honest, that is what we are chasing. We're chasing this picture that we've created or that we've been, um, that someone projected onto us, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're doing whatever it takes to get to that picture. However, it is so freeing and empowering to get to know yourself and create a picture of yourself in your best state of health, Mm -hmm. but it's not easy, right? I don't, it's a step, it's simple, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be hard and it's not going to work because I'm sure there's still somebody who's listening, who's rolling her eyes and turning up or twisting up her lips and saying, it sounds good, but you still have to cut this, or you still have to stop that. Or I don't think I'll ever lose this 200 pounds I'm carrying around if I don't go on a diet. Mm -hmm. So when you have a client who comes into your studio or that you're working with, who has that challenge with cutting off all of the misinformation, how do you encourage her? How do you challenge her? How do you support her? We always start with digging way deeper than that surface level response, because truly I need to cut this or I need to um, drop this weight or I need to focus on X, Y, Z is always just the surface response to a deeper issue. So I'm gonna tell you right now, I mean, overeating, carrying extra weight, being unhealthy, food is not the issue. Food is just, you know, a, a byproduct of that issue you resulted in uh, absolutely so if we can get down to the real issue and tackle that the food decisions come so much easier and and what might be some of those real issues i know that is a loaded question Mm -hmm. but if you could say maybe two or three of the top issues that you see with your clients Mm -hmm. or women that are struggling to release those or unlearn those things that they had learned in the past, what would they be? 
I would say uh, trust, worth, and disconnect. Well, if you don't have trust and you don't know your worth, then that's definitely going to result in a disconnect, right? Absolutely. And then, you know, even I, when, you, when you think about it in simpler terms, um, when we were babies, we knew exactly what we needed and wanted, right? We screamed, somebody fed us. We pooped, somebody cleaned us. Um, when we were full, we stopped eating. And it wasn't until adults put rules out for us that we started to disconnect with our bodies. So in my house specifically, we um, got served dinner and you did not get up from the table until your plate was empty. Whether you were full or not, that's what you did. Um, and that kind of began the process for me of ignoring my own body cues. I'm eating because somebody told me what and how much to eat rather than paying attention to what my stomach is telling me. Um, or even, you know, uh, this is going to sound silly, but going to the doctor back in the day, when you got a shot or something, you'd get a lollipop, right? And that was the beginning of letting you know, like, oh, when you're crying or when you're hurt, sweets make you feel good. Here you go. Here's a little emotional eating for you. Um, so you don't start to realize, like, from very young, you knew what you needed. Your body is naturally equipped to provide and to seek what it needs, but it's the outside sources that come in and, and strip us of that intuition we had all along. Right, and one of the things, that that's so good because I think that from a, a very early age, we're taught that food is the answer when we're not happy, but it's also yes. the answer when we are happy. Mm -hmm. So when is it not the answer? Mm -hmm. And I find that as women, it's, it's always the answer until we start to dislike or disapprove of the way we look. Mm -hmm or the way we feel. But I think, well, in my own personal experience, it was the way I looked before it was the way I feel. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm curious to know for, for the woman who has tried intuitive eating or mm -hmm. you know being intentional and seeing her weight going up and down as a result of that, because when you're on a journey of self-awareness and being more mindful, it's not going to be a straight line, right? No. It's going to have peaks and valleys mm -hmm. because you have to learn yourself. And so when you have that experience, it can be discouraging and take you back into the lie that the only way I'm going to lose this weight is if I go on a diet. Mm -hmm. And so how do you coach or encourage the woman who's on that journey to dumping out all of that mm -hmm. misinformation and learning her body and going through the process and knowing that it's going to be some trial and error mm -hmm. but how did so ultimately the question is how does she stop from getting or feeling defeated and then going back so i think the biggest um factor is being present and being mindful and questioning yourself along the way all the time because we've been disconnected for so long reconnecting with your body has to be intentional and consistent. So when I say like connecting with your body, I mean, literally asking yourself questions all the time, you know, rules will tell you a million things you have to do during the day. But when you wake up in the morning, if you're not hungry, should you eat? No, your body's telling you it doesn't want to yet. When you sit down and have your meal, then it's a matter of literally focusing your energy on feeling it out. How do I feel right now? Am I comfortable? You know, paying attention to those cues. My stomach was growling before and now it's not. That means I'm nourishing my body. I had a headache before and now I don't. That means my body is getting what it needs. Um, and when you can be more mindful, especially during eating, you'll start to notice like when those cues to start to dissipate. You don't have the headache. You don't have the growling. That's when you actually stop eating. And that's how you first start to learn like what a portion actually looks like for yourself. Not what somebody says you can eat, but this is when my body was satisfied. Um, so it's a matter of connecting intentionally and reminding yourself that it took you a lifetime to disconnect. It's going to take some time to get back to where you want to be. That's so good. Starting with that very first thing that you said, like if you wake up in the morning and you're not hungry, don't eat because you know, the gurus will say like, even if you're not hungry, you need to eat as soon as you wake up. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> of course, <clears throat> excuse me, that's dependent on the guru that you follow. Exactly. But what I hear you saying is that you have to trust yourself mm -hmm. and God enough to know that you are the guru mm -hmm. for your body. Mm -hmm. And then how does that work with exercise? So with this, you know, everybody says it's diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to have some semblance of balance between the both of them. Yep. So for that woman who has been like killing herself, trying to do two a days at the gym and then starving when she gets home because she's been going, 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 but she's worked out. Um, how do you break that cycle and find your rhythm for what's going to work for you? So I feel like first it has to be totally based on your goals. Like I love lifting weights. I do. I love lifting heavy weights. I love feeling the strength that I gain from it. I love being able to like stand next to my husband and lift the weight similar to his and being <laughs> like, yep, I did that, you know, but that's just, that's just a preference at a minimum. I, I prefer to think of it as our nutrition, how we're nourishing our body and our movement. Not, we don't all have to lift weights. We don't all have to do Zumba. We don't all have to do 90 minute high intensity workouts, but we all have to move. So when we're talking about changing your body at a minimum, getting yourself back to a place of health and energy and improved sleep, you just need to move. And by that, I mean, go for walks, not even fast walks. I mean, go for leisure walks. You will see, let's say that, you were struggling to lose this weight and you've been going to the gym five days a week. I actually had a client um, a year ago who was working out twice a day, dieting, um, and she was so frustrated because she was not losing a pound and she was exhausted and she was having cravings like crazy. So, you know, through a little evaluation, we could see she was exercising too much and not needing enough, which then was affecting her sleep. So truly in three months, we got her to eat more. We cut out those two a days and we replaced them with two workouts a week plus five days of leisure walking. And that walking in and of itself helped her body. She was having pain issues from working out too much. Um, the walking in and of itself helps not only lean out your body and help you burn fat, but it also reduces what's called your cortisol level, which is your stress hormone. And when your cortisol level is reduced, you are able to handle your stress differently. You're able to sleep better. You um, end up taking in more water. And if you pair that with being mindful with your food and not doing things like overeating or depriving, that also keeps your cortisol levels neutral. Now, when your cortisol levels neutral across the board, your body naturally burns fat because that's what it's made to do. And you're able to rest better. And you're able to rest better, which is everything. So you really helped this client find the perfect balance for her. And when mm -hmm. I say perfect, I'm doing air quotes, right? Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that I love that your bio says is that you help women to cease to chase perfection mm -hmm. in all areas of our lives. And then you prepare us to know that you can want to change and love your body at the same time. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about or speak to the woman who is struggling and potentially has been struggling for years to find that perfect rhythm for herself? How does she find the love for herself in this space as she transitions into the next? I think that no matter what, the journey has to start with gratitude because you cannot hate yourself thin. You cannot- well, Say it again. Yeah, <laughs> you cannot hate yourself thin. Can Just imagine. Right there, though, yes. Also, and again, I'm not taking anything away from the fact that there is a work that comes with making right. these kinds of changes. Mm -hmm. And some of it we may hate in the beginning, but that also hating yourself then also has to do with hating, completely hating the process, whatever that process is for mm -hmm. you. You have to be able to express that gratitude for that process as well. Yes. 
Yes. I just wanted to interject. No, it, it's 100% true. I mean, even to be grateful that you have the opportunity to start the process, grateful that you have, you know, the, the wellness in your mind to want to have the journey, all of it, all of it is a part of gratitude. But I do believe that there's something to be said about telling yourself even if I want to change my body, even if I want to lose these extra pounds, I still have to, not, not can, but I still have to be able to look at myself and tell myself all the great things that I am. Because if I turn this light off right now, I can't be defined by my body anymore because you can't see me. So then what am I? Who am I? Focus Come on- Learn and teach right? Like focus on who you are and what you bring to the people around you. And the more you're grateful for who you are inside, the more you heal inside, your outside just starts to flow better. Oh my gosh. That is so good. It's so true. So good. And that speaks directly to what you were saying about how we approach things in life holistically is going to be how we impact others, be it our children, our spouses, our relationships, our professional um, environments, and also the legacy that we leave. Yes. And who wants a legacy of hating themselves? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it in like the, the simplest terms, like if you go to work, if you have a supervisor who constantly tells you, you are terrible at your job, you bring nothing to the table, you know, you're a drain. Does that motivate you to do better at work? No, it makes you feel terrible and it makes you want to give up. And that's exactly what we do to ourselves. We're constantly judging our physicality and ignoring everything else that we are. So we like are almost abusive toward ourselves. My gosh. And gratitude changes all of that. It's so not much. all of the work, but it's a large part of the work. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that you that you said more than once how important it is to work on your mindset first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's one other thing that I wanted you to speak to specifically because our community is made primarily of women. And that is the fact that you are a hormonal fat loss coach. Mm -hmm. First, can you tell me what that is and what you do as a hormonal fat loss coach? So Hormonal fat loss basically focuses on how your body burns fat as an individual because we all, our bodies all process differently. And you know, as women, our hormones are much different than men. So your body uh, burns fat, retains fat, retains fluid all differently, especially during different times of the month. Um, so when I am coaching someone, um, I help them figure out what types of foods are best for them to increase their energy, to help improve their sleep, to help improve symptoms around their cycles. Um, all of those things are relevant to how your body responds to your hormones. And how is it that someone gets to know their hormones on their own? How does that, that process of self-awareness start? I mean, aside from going to the doctor and getting tested, there's, you know, different tests you could check for your estrogen and progesterone levels and things like that. But also you can focus on how you're responding to things. If you are um, incredibly hungry between meals, if your energy is very low, if you're having lots of cravings um, for sweet and savory things, if you are not able to get consecutive hours of sleep without interruption. Um, all of those things are telling you that your hormones are not balanced. Um, so that's the first step is recognizing it and then troubleshooting it is next. Gotcha. That's good. That's really good. I know something else that has worked for me is actually tracking from day to day. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's the time of the month that you're supposed to be ovulating, if it's mm -hmm. your cycle and tracking those feelings and how long they last before and after. Mm -hmm. And along with what you were saying, I know helps doctors make informed decisions when it comes to helping you get to your 
optimal health exactly. or managing those hormones. Exactly. But I've never necessarily heard of someone being a hormonal fat coach. I think that's mm -hmm. amazing. You know, I had um, worked with a hormonal fat loss coach after I had my daughter and I loved what I learned so quickly because um, it's just amazing to feel like I can eat a meal and be mindful of how my body feels and recognize whether, you know, that's a good fit for me. Um, so I feel like, you know, as a, as a woman, you do notice that at certain times you feel more inflamed, maybe more bloated. Um, you're responding in different ways to your food. And I loved learning that I could just change my food and make my body feel better, more comfortable, energetic, and sleep better. Um, and honestly, through that process, I also learned how to improve my asthma symptoms with my food as well. So I realized, and I did work with a naturopath also, but um, when I'm having a, an asthma flare up, I do things like make sure I have no sugars, cut back on uh, dairy and red meat for some reason is also um, a trigger. For me. So if I'm having an asthma flare up, I increase my greens, I increase my lean meats, and I remove, you know, like the dairy and any uh, sugars. But, um, and then, and I feel clearer and lighter and, and my asthma is better. That's good. And I think mm -hmm. it's important to note, like you said at the beginning, it's not that you have to cut significant things mm -hmm. simply to lose weight. However, mm -hmm. depending upon your personal health, there may be some things that you add or take away so that you are mm -hmm. at your optimal best, not yeah. because of deprivation, not to lose weight, but to be healthy. Yes. I think, I think there's two things to pay attention to here. Like when we say, um, first of all, I want to say that when we focus on reaching this body, right? Like if you really break it down and think about it, you're not really after this body. You are after how you want to feel in that body. So the body is not really the goal. What you want is to feel that. So you have to ask yourself, how can I get to that feeling and detach it from the body? Like I want to feel confident and comfortable, but really what the heck does that have to do with what I look like? You know, so it's like breaking that down. Um, but, but that right there, Evelyn, is like worth a million dollars. Mm -hmm to get to the point where you can embrace that truth and then live accordingly, mm -hmm. so powerful, mm -hmm. so powerful. You think about as moms too, like how much we hold ourselves back from the things that we enjoy because we're uncomfortable in our skin. Like I think about how many times did I go to the beach and not want to be in a bathing suit? How many times, you know, was I at the park with the kids and I just sat on the bench and watched them? Like, if we're talking about legacy and we're talking about being the best human being, the best parent, the best leader, the best model that you can be, then how can you expect them to live and watch you just exist? Yeah. So your kids don't care what you look like in a bathing suit. They want you to get in the water. Your kids don't care if you're tired at the park and you want to sit on the bench, they just want you to pay attention and maybe, you know, help them do a cartwheel, get up and be mobile and be present and enjoy the life that's in front of you because you're going to waste it away wishing you were somebody different. That's so good. I'm so grateful for you being here and sharing your story and being so transparent and for all of the many, many, many nuggets that you have. <laughs> I'm sure it's given our listeners a lot to think about. It certainly has given me a lot to think about. I can't wait to re-listen to this with my journal and like jot some of these things down. Oh, what and a great idea. Yes, like the questions that you were asking and saying to ask yourself and be intentional and present, those are, those are great. So I want to know um, if there is a quote. Well, let me back up. You, I know you said more than once, that we've got to unlearn the things that we have learned, the lies that we've been telling ourselves about how to lose weight or not. But I'm curious, is there a book that you might recommend around um, intentional eating, mindful eating, or is there, you know, um, 
yeah, I would start with a book. Is there a book or even a podcast if you know of one? I know you don't have one yet. Yep. But- I don't have a book. I know that I started my journey by my journey to like being more mindful by following um, Jill Coleman. Jill Coleman coined the phrase moderation 365 and she really helped me learn about having zero restrictions and healing the thought behind control, healing that need to, you know, cut everything out and make food the enemy. Um, So Jill Coleman, uh, her site is moderation 365. And um, that's on Instagram. And I believe her website as well. Um, She goes by Jill fit. Her, her knowledge is incredible and her tools for just letting go of that mindset are, are hugely impactful. Awesome. I'll make sure to link to her information in the show notes. And before I let you go, I just want to give you an opportunity to share a quote or a scripture or even any lasting words of your own to encourage the woman who is or has been telling herself the lie that she will never lose weight, Mm -hmm. never be healthy or look or feel good. I I love uh, Gandhi's quote, be the change you wish to see in the world, because I have made it my purpose to heal my own heart so that I can heal all the women that follow me. If I want a better life for my daughters to live in confidence and for them to have a strong foundation of health and wellness and a sense of self-worth, then I have to live that. So I can't be for anybody else what I won't be for myself. Amen to that. And of course, before I let you go, Evelyn, where can our listeners find and connect with you and Evelyn Lavastia Fitness? So on Instagram, it's um, actually Instagram and Facebook, Evelyn Lavastia Fitness. And my website is www.evelynfit.com. All right. Well, I want to thank you again for being here. I have enjoyed this tremendously, and I'm sure our listeners are going to. And I just want to thank you for being willing to share and do so so eloquently and so transparently. It has been quite the pleasure. I love this conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, ma'am. We'll talk soon. Take care. Oh my goodness. Were you not blessed by all of the gems that Evelyn dropped? I know that I am going to have to go back and listen to some pieces of this over and over again to really grasp the fullness of it. And I hope that you had your journal out so that you could grab those notes and gems for later consumption and, you know, just really thinking through some of these things and breaking down the lie that you will never be healthy and that you have to be on a consistent cycle of dieting for the rest of your life. And if you were blessed by this episode, I would love it if you would take a moment or two and leave a review. You know that when you do, you create an opportunity for other women to find the podcast and be blessed by what we have to share, the gems that we are dropping, and become part of this community. It takes literally a moment or two. You can also grab a screenshot and post it in your Instagram stories or your Facebook stories and tag me. I am at the Tiffany Huff. I would appreciate that as well. And I hope that you will if you have not already subscribed so that you are the first to know when the newest episode drops we have some amazing guests coming on as we continue to move through our series on the lies we tell ourselves and of course i will leave you with this god is not going to play you but if you think that you are going to be successful living the lie that you have to always be on a diet to be healthy, then I promise you are playing yourself. Be blessed.